Yeah, in this case we assume that the robot is near the lift already, so we just concentrate on the behavior of riding the lift itself. And instead of showing you slides, I'll just uh, go directly to video, that would be... Yes, the only time I could able to access lift successfully was about 2 a.m. Friday night, sorry for the bad quality, so you can see it's moving by itself, it enters the lift. I operate the lift because he can't do that. So he stays and waits until the lift arrives. How it works, I'll explain later. Now it moves inside, turns around, and this, here you can see what actually the robot sees. I use point cloud to detect the doors, just for uh, academic purposes. I still could use a uh, camera, but point cloud is much easier for that task. And that cone is the range estimation visualization. So it estimates the distance to the wall from point cloud. Yeah, once a robot enters the lift, the odometry information gets messy, but it's irrelevant. Next, I order the lift to go to the sixth floor. He right now is actually sitting there and monitoring the indicator of the lift. You'll see that next, when it exits. <laughs> How about now? Yes. Here's what it can see. You can see the indicator and the estimated floor on the hut. Let me pause. So, uh, due to some lags and uh, problems with processing, it's uh, delayed. So here you can see the indicator is number three. And the floor is detected is number three. C is how many correct uh, guesses in a row was encountered. So the robot will be sure that this, his floor is actually estimated correctly only when C is more than 2. That's a simple solution, but it works pretty well. And this happened because of uh, power shortage. Uh, power bank is not enough to power Tango, Raspberry Pi, and USB camera all of the time. Also a router. So, Sometimes that happens and it freezes, but he actually managed to successfully overcome this fall flow on the next floor. Now you can see it changed the state to exiting once it can see that there is no obstacle in front, there is no door. This is just uh, exiting the lift from another point of view. <laughs> yeah, the blinking light is actually uh, infrared depth sensor from Tango. The so there is actually not much uh, science in how it's done. So you can see it's a pretty linear behavior with uh, only one branch, so it just needs to move to and enter state. Somebody needs to call the lift. Next robot waits to enter, entering, rotates, starting to monitor the floor. And after that, when it arrives at its floor, if doors are open, it will exit. If not, it will go back to monitoring the floor. Yes, door detection is done uh, from Google Tango using a point cloud. Uh, only the small area of 30 centimeters wide and 50 centimeters high which hovers about 10 centimeters from the ground is scanned. And actually, I just estimate the average depth of this area. 
this is a pretty simple solution and it's performed on Tango itself, so I could skip transmitting the point cloud to the robot. It takes a huge amount of uh, network traffic and it doesn't work really well. So turning around is used by visual odometry information and only inertial part actually. Visual part becomes absolutely unreliable when robot performs pure rotation because it's a monocular visual odometry. So in this case I just take the IMU readings and turn the robot until it will do a 100 degree turn. Uh, indicator detection is uh, technically just find a black rectangle. So I find all black rectangles on the screen just by performing in range, then any edge detection I'm find, finding some contours. And I only select contours which have at least 45% black area. But uh, funny thing is since uh, I don't have much CPU power, I decided not to rectify the image. And it still worked. So I just pick not the rectangles, I pick everything from 4 to 12 segments. And this, the, by doing this, I still keep maintaining the high FPS, because when I do rectification, I end up with about 1 FPS. And so here you can see all the steps and the detected indicator. Uh, another problem is uh, to train and develop this algorithm, different uh, data set was used from different lift. I used that one where we have two lifts and the robot is riding that one in the far corner. And they are quite different. They have different illumination and they have different door colors, but it still works. Uh, for seven segment numbers recognition, I proposed to use some algorithmic solution before and I just found the solution which implements what I actually was trying to do. So here you just need to segment your seven segment number and you need to find the top segment. Next you do two scans, you do a horizontal scan and you do a vertical scan. By doing this you can just estimate uh, which segments are present. In seven segment indicator you probably always know where they will be. You just need to find are they or not. After that, this uh, information is compared by a table of known seven segment recognitions. Yeah, the problem is this program was designed for using uh, recognition for a camera placed in front of indicator in a well lit conditions. In our case, you probably see uh, indicator is looked from the down from below and in my tests, uh, robot never stopped in the center, it always was looking from the side. And it still worked. Uh, but I, additionally, I was needed to implement some erosion to make this part work. And additional tricks, sometimes uh, SSOCR misses up seven and ones. That happens a lot because it detects one by using different. It detects one by just comparing the width of segment to its height. If the width is much smaller than height, that is estimates this is one. Yeah, that's a Bad idea, but robot knows its initial floor and one and seven are pretty much separate. So if estimation goes too high from current floor, it just ignores it. Also, some numbers are detected as, for example, seven is detected as F and six is detected as B. So I just make some adjustments to make sure that those things represent numbers, not letters in our case. And you've seen the successful run. Let me show you a huge amount of unsuccessful ones. So first, because of some behavior problem, this happens. It just stops. So it moves forward, then something happened like uh, probably that was a missed error from point cloud transmission. And it was assuming it stopped. <laughs> it's alive, don't worry. So here it exited at almost wrong angle. This was due to IMU being not calibrated at that time. So instead of stopping, it keeps moving, hit the wall, and it switched the behavior back. And you can see the angle it exited is pretty critical here. Here's set of 
problems with, that happened a lot. He just refused to go there. This is a programming error. It was a behavioral error. That was my programming mistake. I just show you that a problem was I couldn't develop anything in front of a lift. I developed it in the lab, then I took the robot, test, something goes wrong, I go back. Here I just do that. <laughs> this is another uh, visual odometry problem. I forgot to reset initial pulse and it do that. Yeah, thank you.